This is a 992 Porsche 911, and it's one of the greatest sports cars of all time. All 911s are. But they're kind of expensive. See, this car starts at just over $100,000. That's the base MSRP on a base Carrera, and that's a lot of money to a lot of people. So I know what you might be thinking. If you wanted to buy a 911, you wanted to save a little bit of money, maybe you'll buy one that's a couple of years old. You can still get the same generation, maybe the generation just before, save tens of thousands of dollars. Well, that's not really gonna be the case because 911s are kind of like old comic books or cocaine. They don't really lose their value, but there's still some hope. If you wanted to buy a 911 and you were on a bit of a budget, you might not be able to look into the 992, but there is a generation that you might be able to get. This, the 996 generation of the Porsche 911. This one happens to be a base model Carrera. It's got a six-speed manual, finished in this beautiful Arctic silver. So it's by spec, one of the cheapest 911s that money can buy. So in today's video, we'll talk about this car, talk about a bit of what Porsche went through and why this car was made, how it stands out in the Porsche's history line, and why it's a little bit more of a cheaper option compared to some other generations of the 911. Then I'll take it out for a brief road test to find out what this car is like on the road almost two decades after its initial release. There are many generations of the 911, and for the 996, it was on sale from 1997 to 2006, and it replaced the 993 generation. The 993 was air-cooled, meaning that all of the heat generated by the engine was dissipated directly into the air, and that's the way that it had been for every generation before it as well. With the 996, Porsche tried something very different and they introduced water-cooled technology. And to Porsche files and Porsche enthusiasts, this was the end of the world because any kind of change from what they thought was the perfect car must be the work of the devil. But you have to understand that Porsche at the time was having some financial troubles and they had to make a change in order to survive. And if they didn't, the 993 very well could have been the last 911 that we ever saw. So outside of the water cool, they got a new engine, a reworked exterior, a new interior, and it was the first 911 to be made on an actual assembly line as opposed to being hand-built like all of its predecessors. And it also shared a lot of components with another member of the Porsche family. Of course, I mean the 986 generation of the Boxster which had just been released. I did a video on one of those actually, so I will leave a link for you to go ahead and check that video out. But surely that can't be why these are so much less expensive than other generations. To understand what I mean, a base model 993 generation, the previous gen, with decent mileage, maybe not all that well kept, would cost you around $30,000, $35,000 if you find a really good price. A comparable 996 911 would cost less than half of that. I've actually seen base model Carreras with higher mileage, obviously not all that well kept, hitting around $10,000. That's a crazy, crazy low amount of money for a 911, especially when you consider that these cars had an original MSRP in the 60s. There's no way that you would find a modern 911 with even 100,000 miles hitting $10,000. It's just not gonna happen. So what is it about this car? Well, there's a couple of things. And the main thing I think is the engine because with this car and indeed the 986 generation of the Boxster, there's something called the IMS bearing. The IMS bearing stands for intermediate shaft bearing. Now, the design of this car was such that there's a shaft that runs basically along the entirety of the engine and it's in charge of some things. But the shaft is not the issue. Actually, that design has been around for several generations of the 911. The issue is the bearing because in this car, that bearing supported that shaft. And if that bearing were to fail, which could happen, it would shoot debris into the engine causing all kinds of issues. Now, the result for you as the owner could be a full engine rebuild. And on a 911, that is quite costly. But I don't think that's the only issue. Maybe something a little bit more superficial would be the looks. The main concern, I think, is these headlights. They're actually called the fried egg headlight. That's not an official name by Porsche. Obviously, that's just what people call them. And they weren't really received too well. Originally, I wasn't the biggest fan of them either. But I'll say that with time, they've really grown on me. And with even more time, I think they're gonna have a bit more of a classic appeal, a little bit of a classic touch. So I wouldn't go away from getting a 996 just because of the headlights. The older they get, the better they look. Just like with anything, there are a lot of cars, even the Ferrari F40, upon its release, people said that it was incredibly ugly. You're not gonna find too many people that think that it's ugly today. It might be the same story with these headlights. Onto the interior. 
If you're buying a 911, it's going to be a car that you're gonna to wanna to drive. That's what Porsches are all about. And actually we're gonna take it out for a drive very shortly. But you want the interior to be a nice place to be. And it is, you know, I have not driven a Porsche that I didn't like being in. The seats are very comfortable. All of the fit and finish of the car is what you would expect for an expensive sports car. And they held up very well for the time. There's some cool period specific features that you'll find on this car, namely this little CD storage system. It's kind of cool. I have it on my Boxster actually. I don't really use CDs, but it's a cool little thing. And if you do buy one of these cars and you have to have Apple CarPlay or Bluetooth audio or whatever, Porsche has something called PCCM, which is Porsche Classic Communication Management. It's essentially an aftermarket stereo that slots in perfectly with whatever generation of classic Porsche that you have. And it gives you things like Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth audio, all of the modern features that you want from a modern Porsche. I think it costs like a thousand dollars or 1200 bucks, whatever it happens to be. It's a lot of money compared to if you want to just buy an aftermarket radio from Pioneer or whatever, but I would just go for the PCCM because you don't want them to look like they've been fiddled with and messed with. And an aftermarket radio is the easiest way to look like you've messed with the car. With PCCM, it can still be a proper Porsche product and you can get all the functionality of a modern car. But let's go ahead and take this thing out for a drive and see what it's like. One thing I will say about this car, it does have a little bit more road noise, I guess, compared to obviously a more modern 911, but the modern 911 is just so much more refined. I wouldn't be buying a car like this expecting it to feel like a brand new 911. It's gonna feel great. It still feels great. I mean, this car has 55,000 miles on it, which is not a lot for a car of this year, but you know, it, it's a 911. It's going to drive brilliantly. That's the whole point of buying this car. You're buying a sports car. This car is the year 2000, so it had the original engine that the 996 was offered with, a 3.4 liter naturally aspirated flat six, makes 300 brake horsepower. And that's a pretty healthy amount of power, especially back in the year 2000. Even today, 300 horsepower, I mean, that's what a modern day turbocharged base model Boxster or Cayman is making. This car is over two decades older than that. So it's a pretty impressive amount of power and definitely enough for you to be able to have fun without getting yourself into too much trouble. So it's a great car. It's a perfect sports car for the weekend. And the thing is, if you are spending money on a car, you should want to drive it. And with this car, you can drive it. You can put a bunch of miles on it and it being a 911, you're not gonna lose a lot of money. These have already really hit the bottom of what they're going to be worth. They're not gonna depreciate down to be $500 cars or anything like that. So if you jump into one right now, you're gonna be jumping in at a price point where number one, it's a very attractive price point because they're not that expensive. And number two, your money is safe in the car. So you can drive it, enjoy the car, and you don't really have to have in the back of your mind that you're gonna be losing a bunch of money if you put miles on it. The reality is with a lot of cars that you buy, they depreciate, you lose money. They're not gonna be worth what they were worth when you bought them. When you buy into some of these older cars, older sports cars, things that are originally very expensive and maybe have come down in price, you're getting rid of a lot of that risk. You're buying a car that you can enjoy without losing money. And that's the best car to own. Drive it a bunch, put a bunch of miles on it, and if you decide you wanna sell it, you get all of your money back. So really you're just paying for insurance, maintenance, and gas. What, what more do you want out of a sports car? And for the most part, I would say people don't really know the difference between the generations of 911s, people being the general public, obviously. So when you buy one of these cars, when someone sees you on the road, they don't know that it's a 996. They just know that you have a Porsche. That's pretty awesome. And that's part of the benefit of having a 911 because the 911 name really is a big deal to a lot of people. When you drive a 911, you're driving a 911. Oh, 911, it's the best. Right, it's Porsche's flagship car. Yes, it's the least expensive of the generations, but it doesn't make it the least Porsche of the generations, if that makes any sense. It's just as much a Porsche as any of the other ones. You're just getting it at a better price point. I don't see what's wrong with that. I get it, the IMS bearing, it's a bit of a concern, but have the car inspected. If you really 
want to have a 911 and you, you want a 996, get the IMS bearing replaced as a preventative measure. You know, I think it's a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is that it costs. And then you have that peace of mind. Now, something I want to try out on the channel is what I'm going to be calling the car cave crates. Car cave crates is going to be a couple of different categories that I'm going to decide at the end of each video if I think a certain car will fit into those categories or not. It doesn't have to be just one. It could be a couple of different ones. So it's really just my take on a summary on the car. The car cave crates will be collectability, daily drivability, road trip worthiness, track it or avoid it. With the 996, I would say that it has collectability, daily drivability, maybe not so much, but road trip worthiness, I would definitely say a yes to that. And you should track it. These are Porsches, they should be driven. I wouldn't avoid one of these. I think it's at a great price point. The collectability factor of this is, again, it's the first water-cooled Porsche ever made. And it really changed the direction for the Porsche brand. I think that with time, people will start to appreciate these a lot more, especially with modern cars becoming so technologically dependent, these more analog sports cars are going to be easier to appreciate. And as far as the road trip worthiness, it's got some great storage space in the front. You have the two seats in the back that you're really not gonna be putting people into, so you can store some luggage there as well. And it's a, it's a comfortable car and it's a fun car, something that you're gonna wanna take on a road trip. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna say a huge thank you to Porsche of Ontario for loaning me this car. This car again is actually on sale. So I will leave links in the description below to their website, their social media, and the listing for this car if it's still available by the time that you watch this video. Leave me a comment below with what you thought of the video. What do you think of the car cave crates? Do you agree with me? Do you have a 996? Use that comment section as a platform to share your story. I love reading that stuff and I'm sure other people do as well. Leave me a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care.